This is KGW News at Sunrise. Dozens of Portland police officers resigned from the Bureau's rapid response team. Have I ever seen anything like this in my career? No, uh, I don't think any of us have. Now, they are still officers with the Bureau, but not on that team anymore. We're going to hear why they did this in the latest drama surrounding Portland's protests. Also this morning, Oregon's eviction moratorium is one step closer to getting extended. The House gave it the thumbs up. Now it's in the hands of the Oregon Senate with the deadline to make that extension happen less than two weeks away. And they're great for the environment, but it comes with an unfortunate consequence. The big problem, wind energy is posing to wildlife and the effort to solve it. Good morning on a Friday. We have made it to the end of the week. It has been beautiful weather and that's Somebody's just going to extra chipper. Today. It's Friday. Seriously. <laughs> it's Friday. Does it's a Friday. <laughs> it is gorgeous out there. Let's take you to the Oregon coast right now. A live look from Newport. Got the camera pointed uh, up the Aquita Bay it's just a little bit see some of the uh, cloud cover that is hugging the Oregon coast and it's entirely possible that some of that tries to work its way up the mouth of the Columbia towards Scappoose and maybe even into the downtown Portland area for a little while this morning. 57 last check at PDX. Scappoose waking up at 56 61 already in the Dows. You were in the 90s yesterday. Baker City the cool spot on this map at 40. Don't worry. You've got a nice warm up coming your way today and for days ahead. All right. Our Friday starts off like this. Mostly clear and we stay mostly clear. Sunny this afternoon, 81 and guys, it gets a whole lot warmer from there. We'll check out the 70 forecast in just a bit. All right, Chris, we'll see you then. Right now we want to get to our top story this morning, which involves the Portland Police Bureau. Dozens of officers are resigning from what's known as the rapid response team. They're the officers who respond to protests and they all quit after one of their members was indicted for assault during a protest. In all, about 50 Portland police officers and detectives and sergeants stepped down. They're still on the force, but not part of the specialized team. Mayor Ted Wheeler says he's spoken with the governor and the Oregon State Police will now help with crowd control if any future protests get out of hand. The police bureau says Portlanders don't need to worry about safety in the city. As your police bureau, we are committed to providing the community the best service that we can. And this does not mean that there will be no response in public order situations. We'll use the resources that we have. Multnomah County DA Mike Schmidt wouldn't talk to us on camera about this mass resignation, but he did say in a statement, quote, management and staffing of the rapid response team falls within the purview of the leadership of the Portland Police Bureau. I have confidence that the Bureau will continue their mission to maintain public safety. And he added, we cannot expect the community to trust law enforcement if we hold ourselves to a lower standard. All right, let's turn to coronavirus and quick three quick things to know. Number one, two of Oregon's largest mass vaccine sites will shut down tomorrow at noon. Clinics at the Portland Airport and the Convention Center closing for good then. So this is your last chance to get the Johnson & Johnson shot at those sites. Pfizer will be there only for those 12 and older who need their second dose. Number two, the Delta variant first discovered in India has now spread to more than 80 countries. In the U.S., at least 37 states have those cases, making up 10% of new infections, according to the CDC. Health officials worry if it's left uncontrolled. One case of the Delta variant could create multiple new infections, triggering a possible another surge. And number three, the U.S. investing a lot of money towards a COVID vaccination pill. The government is spending $3 billion on development of these antiviral pills. They could minimize symptoms after infection. Doctors believe it'll benefit those whose immune systems don't respond strongly to the vaccine. And those are your three things to know. A bill that would extend Oregon's eviction moratorium is moving forward. The Oregon House passed it yesterday and now it heads to the state, uh, the state Senate. If senators vote to pass it, the bill would give people with pending applications for rental assistance a 60 day extension. The eviction moratorium went into effect near the start of the pandemic and right now it's set to expire at the end of the month. If this bill doesn't pass, then starting next month, renters have to pay at least one month's rent or face eviction. For more than a year, people who are homeless and got COVID could quarantine in a few Portland hotels. But now that more people are getting vaccinated and case numbers are dropping, 
Is that going to continue? Here's Bryant Clerkley with a look. Good morning. I spoke with one woman who stays in the shelter and she says without it, she doesn't know where she'd be. Jillian Hamblin is recovering from COVID-19. Without a free stay at the Jupiter Hotel, she said she'd be suffering on the streets. Last March, when COVID kept customers away, the Jupiter became a shelter for the houseless in partnership with Multnomah County. The county rents the space. The Jupiter will continue to be a shelter for the next six months and potentially until next spring. In the past year, about 1,500 people have quarantined at the hotel. They found out about it because they were already in the shelter system. If we didn't have it, I'm out there homeless. I probably would have been given 20, 30 people this a day. You know, because um, you can't help it. When you're homeless, you share everything. And like the Jupiter Hotel, the Banfield Motel will also be open for the homeless, and that will remain open for the next six months at least, according to the county. In Portland, I'm Bryant Clerkley, KGW News. Well, it's going to be hot and dry for a long stretch, so areas are starting burn bans now. Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue has issued one starting at noon today. For reference, they have a big service area. It covers Beaverton, Hillsboro, Tigard, and Westland, other areas. If you're in those, that means no backyard burning, no agricultural burning, no controlled burns of any kind. That said, those small outdoor cooking or fire pits or fire tables, as well as barbecues, are still okay. Wind energy is clean, it's renewable, it doesn't use fossil fuels, but there is a downside to it. Those massive wind turbines are deadly for birds. Yeah, so a local wind energy company has teamed up with the Oregon Zoo to help protect one very large and very endangered species. Keely Chalmers explains. Thousands of wind turbines dot the landscape, each generating energy, offering a clean green alternative to fossil fuel. The problem, studies have shown, those huge turbine blades kill hundreds of thousands of birds every year, including some that are endangered. But so far, critically endangered California condors have come out okay. There have been no instances of condor fatalities as a result of wind farms, so uh, it's, it's not happened. Portland-based wind energy company Avon Grid Renewables is working to make sure it stays that way. Its Manzana wind farm in California sits in an area that is also the natural range for condors. To help protect the birds, the company uses technology. Most free-flying condors are equipped with GPS transmitters uh, by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And we use a geofence technology, which basically senses for the presence of those tags. When a condor is detected in the area, the company will then shut down the turbines to allow the birds to pass through. And recently, it went a step further. The company teamed up with the Oregon Zoo to help the condors even more. Um, and this is a part of a conservation plan that was approved by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, who were also involved in its development. For nearly two decades, the Oregon Zoo has been helping bring the critically endangered California condor back from the brink. The population now around 500 in the world. This is a peek inside the zoo's Johnson Center for Wildlife Conservation. It's a condor breeding facility. More than 80 chicks have hatched at the center since 2003, and more than 50 Oregon Zoo reared birds have been released. The zoo's partnership with Avon Grid Renewables includes funding that will support the rearing of six more condors. Because as the condor population increases and more turbines go up, mitigation will be key. There's a lot of progress still to be made, but as the population recovers, uh, there will be more of them in the region where uh, wind farms are, and we want to make sure that we are uh, enabling that recovery to continue and not, and not doing any harms. No question, as wind energy grows, so does the risk to many birds. And the work to allow the birds and the turbines to coexist will likely continue for years to come. Keely Chalmers, KGW News. All right, let's bring in Chris McGinnis now for our Friday forecast. And boy, the mountain just showing off this morning. Chris. It is in this mountain, of course, Mount Jefferson from our Timberline camera. Looking south towards Oregon's second highest peak, Mount Jefferson, 10,000, just shy of 10,500 feet. Snow capped and uh, it's going to be beaming in just a few minutes when that, once that sun comes up. All right, we will see plenty of sunshine satellite radar across the Pacific Northwest, not showing any cloud cover this morning. At least no high level cloud cover. There could be some low clouds along the Oregon coast. 
from one gorgeous view of a mountain to another. This is our Stoller Vineyard camera checking out Mount Hood in the distance, and that looks gorgeous this morning. Waking up to temperatures that are generally in the 50s across much of the Willamette Valley. A couple cool spots. Hillsboro and King City at 48. Portland sits at 57. And at last check, Salem at 52 degrees. There are some clouds along the North Oregon coast and Astoria. Your forecast today, you will warm into the lower 60s late this afternoon. And here in Portland, we should have no problem getting back into the 80s. Maybe a degree or two cooler than yesterday, but still a nice looking day today. I'll step out of the way. There's your weekend forecast. Warmer Saturday and hot. In fact, I need to bump that 91 on Sunday. That needs to be 94. Sorry about that. 94 Sunday. Why am I apologizing? I don't know. Happy Father's Day. 94 on Sunday and then record heat in our forecast on Monday. 99. Hey, you Guys. shouldn't have to apologize for anything this weekend, Chris. You're a dad. Sunday is your day. Uh, let's talk about what happens tomorrow. It is Juneteenth which officially became a federal holiday yesterday here in the United States. So again, the holiday is tomorrow, June 19th, but we know a lot of companies and businesses are observing the holiday today. Coming up on Sunrise, we're gonna share the historical background behind Juneteenth. 